Okay, well, thanks everybody for joining. Um, so uh, um, I'm Lisa Gerhardt and me and Alberto today are gonna walk you through um, Reframe at NERSC. So uh, first I'm gonna talk a little bit about what Reframe is and how it's configured. And then I'll walk through the anatomy of sort of a basic test. Um, and then Alberto is gonna show um, some of some of the more complicated tests and then sort of do a demo, I think, and maybe a walkthrough of some of the um, uh, some of the benchmarking tests that we have uh, um, connected up. So um, Reframe is an automated testing suite that was originally developed by CSCS. Um, it's the it's the main it's the suite that we use for all verification testing at at NERSC. Um, so it's Python based. It has a set of um, of classes that specify that let you specify basic variables and parameters of tests. Um, so it's sort of a unified framework that you can use to to create your tests and then have them be compiled and run um, either in the batch system or on the login nodes. Um, and it's repeatable, and you can share this information with anyone through our Git, Git GitHub repo um, and be able to run these consistent set of tests. So it. It's set up, you know, CSCS is an HPC center, so it's, it supports most basic um, HPC actions. Um, you can do things like negative, native programming environment builds, like it understands pergen, uh, GNU, GNU and pergen, you know, and um, it can understand things like CMake um, and do automated builds that way, um, just by telling it build type CMake, um, which is really nice. Uh, so for each test, it prepares a batch file, then it submits the batch file and it waits and retrieves the output um, and then checks it for sanity, um, a sanity function that you give it. Um, and then based on that, it lets you know whether or not the test failed or, or passed. Um, and so you can configure different systems where you can define things like the QoS to use, what modules to use, um, whether it's um, LMOD or Tickle, um, what flags you want to use for each system. Um, uh, and so it comes in handy. That really comes in handy here at NERSC where we have multiple different systems where we need to test. Um, and I mentioned before, it can automatically handle most build systems. Um, and you you can, it can understand make, see, make, and it, they just add its back in there too. Um, and you can, uh, you can also configure it with variables in the same way that you can configure most of these build systems. Or you can define your own build process that has a, an option for if you have a much more complicated build process, you can just run a script. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so this is how Reframe is set up at NERSC. It's available on two repos in the NERSC GitLab instance. Um, so this one, we have we do a fork of the CSCS because we do some local modifications. Um, and that the, the actual framework that runs the tests is maintained by Brian um, in the CSG group. Um, but the, the repo of tests, um, which is called Reframe NERSC tests, um, is uh, is a group effort across all of, all of NERSC, um, with mainly contributions from consulting DAS and DSEG, um, and a f and a few others. Um, so uh, the Reframe NERSC test is is just it's basically a collection of all the tests that are run on the Reframe scaf scaffold, um, and each test is intended to be sort of an atomic check of a single functionality. Um, you know, does this particular flag in Fortran work? Can we compile with um, the FFTW libraries? Can we reach um, HPSS and connect? Those sort of things. Um, so there's two main modes that are used at NERSC. We have the checkout mode, um, which is what's run after a system maintenance or when there's some kind of system issue to see if everything's working. Um, and because system maintenance is usually at 12 to 16 hours, you're often doing running checkout at 3 a.m. at night and you're the last thing that happens before the system goes back to the users. So you really want this to be quick. Um, so we designed these tests uh, with the goal that each one should take less than five minutes um, while still being able to check the functionality. Um, and it gets run after every maintenance. Um, and CSG also uses this uh, when they're doing development work on, on some of the development systems, they'll, they'll push out a change and then they can just run reframe and see if it changed anything. Um, so it's helpful for those kind of iterations. Um, and then the second mode is benchmark. Um, and these are tests that are used to record long-term performance on the system. Um, so these are things like IOR on the system, 
you know, again, Scratch and CFS, um, the OSU network tests. Um, we have a test for AstroPile to test how long it takes to load um, a huge mass of shared libraries. And a whole suite of the NH benchmarks are, um, are included in Reframe. Um, and these are run either daily or for the really long tests, they're run weekly because they just take too long to get through the queue. And then the output from that is uh, collected and published in the in the Omni stack. And I think that Alberta is going to be talking more about that later. Next slide. Um, so right now for Reframe, we have five systems defined. We have Corey, Gertie, Perlmutter, Alvarez, and Muller. Um, and we have two branches. And I apologize, everyone, for the mismatch in the naming here. It just sort of happened. Um, but we have main, which is the stable branch, and that's what you would run for checkout on Cori and Perlmutter. So this should be um, all the tests that are geared for the production systems. Um, and then we have Muller, um, which has which is where you would put new tests for new capabilities that are deployed on the on the on the development systems. Um, so we have, for instance, a number of a number of tests for Slingshot Eleven that are only reasonable to run. Um, on Slingshot 11 GPUs. Um, there's also some tests every time that uh, Corey changes modules, there's a test that uh, that makes sure that no different, no unexpected modules have changed. Um, and it'll raise an alarm if that happens. Um, so those sorts of things where you roll them out first on the development system, and then when the maintenance or whatever change is pushed out to the production system, then these tests move to the main branch and that's where they stay. Um, so currently, if you come and do a, a merge request or want to push in some new code, it's set up by default to go to the Muller branch. So you don't need you don't really need to worry about this, um, and you can test it anywhere you want. Generally, when you're making codes and testing, it's easier to use the development systems like Muller or Gertie because you don't have to wait in line, especially if you're using the batch system. But there's no requirement unless you need something at scale that you have to use those. Um, and we have uh, continuous integration that uh, will check all the new tests whenever a merge request is run. It runs the whole chain on on all on four of the five systems. Alvarez is too um, unstable to really be give us reasonable um, continuous inter integration feedback. Uh, so right now, um, for tests that have the checkout label, we have uh, 371 tests written for Corey and 330 for Perlmutter. So we have a pretty broad suite there. Um, and for benchmark tests, um, we have 143 on Cori uh, and 22 on Perlmutter. So we definitely need to add some more Perlmutter benchmarks. So if you have ideas there or ideas for tests that need to be run and check out that aren't covered, um, I certainly encourage you to come and um, either write your own test or at least open an issue. Um, yeah. um, so contributions are always welcome. And we have a reframe Slack channel for questions where folks are pretty pretty proactive about answering questions. So this is intended to be a group effort. So please feel free to contribute. So, so this is um, an example test. So this is this is a Saxby GPU test. So just it's just Saxby, which does some little exercising of the GPUs and does calculates, um, does some, I forget what it does, matrix multiplication or something. I don't even remember anymore. Sorry, it's been a while since I wrote this. Um, but you can grab the Saxby code off the web um, and be able to do a calculation. Um, and this basically tests that the GPUs work and can be accessed, um, which sometimes they can't be if you don't have the right um, setting set up. Um, so on the, this is what um, this test looks like. So I took this and straight up copied and pasted it out of the reframe repo. And so the first three lines at the top are sort of the standard this is in Python, so it's sort of the standard import the libraries um, that you need. Um, and then the first thing, they have different kinds of tests, and this is the most, what they call the simple test, is their basic unit of testing. Um, and what this does is it builds the code on the login node and then runs it via the batch system. And what kind of batch system you have and is set in a different configuration file that, uh, so, and then you create the test. In the next few lines, you have a description and a maintainer. And basically there, it tells you what is this test and who, who is maintaining it. So who, who do you knock on if it fails or if you want to change it? Um, and this, uh, this description, this CUDA SACSBC example, is printed out um, when the test is run. So it's usually intended to be semi-informative so that folks know what it is testing and what, um, what to look for if it does fail. Um, and then the next two lines, the valid systems and the valid programming environments tell you where um, this test should run. So 
since this is a GPU test, um, we don't doesn't make any sense to run it where there's not GPUs. So we just limit it to you know the N9 systems and to run in a QoS that has access to the GPUs. And then it works in all three of the programming environments that are available. Um, some of the tests are only um, for specific programming environments. So if you wanted to limit this a little further, you could trim this list down. Um, and then you can see down here, there's a source path that tells you um, this, this code is checked into the same directory. Um, and that's going to be compiled with the make build system. So you just say build system make, and it'll do make make install and all that stuff behind the scenes. Um, and it's going to make an executable called main. Um, and then we have tags. That's how we keep track of what the test is for. And so the tags um, are mostly unconstrained. You're, you can use whatever tags you want. The only two that are sort of that are controlled are the checkout and benchmark tests because those are those have specific requirements. Um, and then um, you can also load modules during the test. So this test is using the GPU, so it needs to load the CUDA toolkit module. Um, so let's go to the next screen, please. Uh, and then you have a bunch of stanzas where you can set up the Slurm parameters. So these are these these settings here translate directly to flags that you would add to your sbatch command. Um, so you want to run one task on one node, um, use two CPUs, and you want to have access to one GPU. Um, and then you have this sanity pattern, and you're asserting that it must be in there. Um, so basically, this means if this text is not in the output, um, then the, the test failed. Uh, and so this frequently what will happen at, with this particular test, if you can't access the GPUs, it'll compile and run. It'll come back with a max error of zero. Um, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't work. Um, so you need to find this this line. It must have this error, max error 198 in it to be successful. Um, and then there's also a way you can have special um, special settings based on the environment that you're in. Like uh, Pergin GNU needs the CPE CUDA. So if we're not in the NVIDIA one, we need to add this extra module list. And that's what this line down at the bottom is doing. So let's go to the, the next slide. Um, so this is the same code we saw before. Um, so if you take this and run it in the reframe example, what it's going to do is it's going to produce this script. Um, and it's going to make two scripts. It's a build and run. So it's going to make name of test underscore build. Um, and name of test underscore job. And I'll show, so this is the build one here. Um, and basically there's some a bunch of stuff at the beginning um, to trap the errors and push them back up to reframe. And that's just boilerplate that reframe puts in there for every single one. Um, and then you can see um, it, it will make one of these for each particular kind of test, right? So if you're on Perlmutter GPU, it's gonna make three tests, one for NVIDIA, GNU and AOCC. So this is the, the has, happens to be the GNU one. And so it adds in all the module loads that we asked for. And then we told it build system make. And so it puts in the sort of default make stuff and then it, it makes um, what's in the directory. So this runs on the login node. Um, and then next slide. Um, when that succeeds, uh, it generates a job script. Um, and so this is the second half of the code that I talked about. You can see it. <clears throat> it's translating these um, settings into, into sbatch commands. And then it carries your module loads through, and then it takes what your executable is and does the S run. And then in the background, um, reframe queries the batch system uh, until the job finishes, and then it checks the output for that, um, that sanity pattern that it has and reports a success or not. So if any step along the way fails, um, it reports a failure for the whole test. Um, otherwise, it reports a success. So next slide. So how do you run this? Okay, so first you need to check out the suite of tests and you can just check it out from GitLab and put the address in there um, and you change to that directory. And then we have a, a default install of the reframe scaffolding um, in global common that anyone can use. Uh, and if you wanted to run all the tests, you would just, um, just do this line. So reframe and a couple of flags and then um, select which tags you want, you're good to go. Um, and so there's a couple of common actions you can do. You can, so there's a little R, you have to tell reframe to do something. So it's an action. So you can either, you, blah, you can either run it or list it. Those are the main common ones. Um, and then you usually wanna select tests only with a particular chat tag, usually check out. Um, and then if you want this minus C dot path um, limits 
which tests you're going to, which paths you're going to run. So maybe you just wanted to run the suite of tests that are for Python. So you would say minus C Python. Excuse me, my cat is coming. Um, and then uh, you can, the, this capital R tells it to recursively look in all directories. So if you have subdirectories with tests in them, um, it'll search for those. Uh, so um, the other thing is you can, there's some optional stuff you can do. They can specify um, system or um, keep stage files, which will keep the output. Like if a test is successful, it will um, delete all the output that it makes, all those files that I was just showing before. Um, but sometimes you wanna keep them and make sure that uh, that everything worked as intended or look at the scripts afterwards and make sure that they work. Um, and so then you can tell it, keep the stage files and it'll keep them around even if it succeeds. Um, so I think now I'm gonna hand it over to you, Alberto. Yeah, so uh, I collected here a couple of uh, um, tests that we that we wrote inside the the, the reframe collection, uh, and these are more and more um, specialized and more complex, let's say. So the the main point that I wanted to make is that you can feed uh, reframe with different parameters. So if you feed it with two parameters, sorry, two sets of parameters. We'll try all the possible combinations of the inputs uh, on all the tests. So if we, oops, so I think I'm in the wrong Wi-Fi. Oh, it's gonna break. Well, uh, I, I can show you directly inside the um, a terminal. Let me share my terminal. Okay, so can you read my oops, can you read my terminal here? Yeah. Yeah, I see it. So I have my my copy here of uh, the reframe nerve, nerve tests here. Um, let me yeah, this one. Uh, so what I wanted to share uh, with you is the HDF5 and HDF modules uh, and the cray.py uh, test that I wrote. So this test uh, is quite similar to the uh, to the normal um, to the to the simple test that Lisa was showing with the uh, sex pi, I think. Uh, but this test comes with two different parameters. So uh, Reframe will try to compile it for HD5 serial, HD5 parallel, NetCDF serial, NetCDF parallel on several different systems. Um, and if there are some conditions, so if, this, if the test is serial, uh, only load the serial uh, modules. And we can maybe try running this test uh, inside the reframe. So right now we are using the uh, the reframe in the in global common, and we're specifying it to run all the tests that are found in the in this path. So uh, under HD5 and NCTF, and then create a file. Um, so it started com compiling this code. And since we are on Cori, it's gonna only run on Cori, but it's gonna run on the KNL nodes and also no, just on the KNL nodes, but. <clears throat> but you can also specify different uh, parti partitions or different systems, and it, it, it will compile it for all the different partitions. So you can see here uh, the different parameters that we pass to the, to the test. So it will try to compile with the, <clears throat> the, the Cray modules with a HD5 parallel on KNL with a certain programming environment. Um, <clears throat> I may have, uh, I wanted to show you also the, the, the test structure uh, inside the stage directory, but maybe we can do that for another <coughs> test later. Thank you for question too. Another question, let's see. Oops. Oh, no, this is 
running. Yeah. Was running saying that we uh, accept the DRs or what we uh, pull requests. Yeah, yeah, so, so remind me, does this is this running in the is it submitting batch jobs too, or is it just compiling? Uh, this is submitting batch jobs. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's because, that's probably why it's taking so long. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I can SSH to Miller or. Oh, I have a question about the parameters. Um, I'm familiar with PyTest, and there's something called a test fixture. Is that kind of similar to that? Yeah. So. I, okay. I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not super sure because uh, it has been a while since it's I used like, PyTest, but. It sounds like you're able to like inject the different inputs you want and then it does the com yeah, the combination, the combination of different them. inputs, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there are <clears throat> more, even more complex tests that we're gonna see in a, in a second as soon as this is over. Uh, and those are, yeah, okay. So we see that we run all the 12 uh, uh, test cases on Cori. Uh, so let me just switch to Gertie maybe. So we get uh, the throughput. Um, okay, so what I wanted to show you next is the test cause uh, scripts or tests. And these use a separate list of tuples uh, as the only parameter. But each tuple is a combination of inputs that have to be uh, paired together uh, for the test to, to work. Let's see the, the code for that. Okay, so there is uh, a lot of extra stuff before the test, the actual test. But as you can see, the only parameter to this test is a single variable configs, uh, which stores a list of um, these are named tuples, so they're uh, just normal tuples with uh, some extra fancy Python <laughs> shortcuts, let's say. So we are defining a specific uh, set of um, configuration that we want to pass to the test. So we want to uh, run this test on a specific, uh, specific file size, uh, and we want to, we we don't want to enforce uh, any uh, classes of service, uh, but we expect a certain class out as output, and uh, we don't want to specify any system. So all these four uh, configuration are a single um, represent a single um, a single test. So right now we are we are not doing any fixture. We're not doing any uh, combinations because we want this specific list of parameters uh, to, to be tested. And so when we pass a parameter inside the reframe, we can then access that through the variable that we set here. So for example, um, so yeah, so for, so for example, in, in this case, if the, um, the file size to be tested is um, below 10 gigabytes, then we add checkout. For uh, bigger tests, we don't want to, uh, Add the checkout tag, so we uh, we don't need to. Um, so we don't make CSG wait for uh, twenty minutes for this test to go through after a maintenance, for example. Um, so yeah, as you can see, you can access the 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 specific parameter inside the each test by using the name that you define here outside. So self.conf. Uh, will be a single or the specific conf config uh, tuple, let's say. Uh, here, uh, one, one of the config tuples that we are feeding the, into the, the, the test. And this is a, a bit uh, of a, a more complex uh, test uh, because we need to, as you, as you see, as you can see, we need to specify a list of uh, specific variables. So we, we, we don't want the test to automatically scramble and, and combine different parameters together, we have a specific set of parameters. Uh, then, um, yeah, I have another uh, test to show you here. It's a, a set of um, commands that we want to test. So for example, we do HSI put, HSI get, and we test that the um, HPSS is able to 
store and uh, and and serve the, the files that we uh, that we send in send it. Um, and this in this case we use uh, uh, the keys of a dictionary as a parameter, and then uh, we use the key to access the uh, the values in the configuration dictionary. So let's see the test briefly, maybe. Why do you pull that up? I had a quick question. Um, yeah. The does the self dot valid programming environments look for what's available on the specific system, or do you yeah. all have to? Yeah. So, okay. Okay. It, that, that's a good point. So yeah, if you specify, uh, you can you can specify uh, different programming environments on different systems. For so for example, you can have programming environment uh, uh, Intel. On Parmata, will not actually. Yeah, on, on, uh, yeah, you can have the programming environment Intel, programming environment GNU uh, on different system on Core and on Parmata, and the reframe uh, automatically knows. But well, we instructed it to uh, to know that uh, there is no programming environment Intel on Parmata, so it's not. It will not try to uh, combine uh, Intel with Parmata. Oh, is that in the config file? Yeah, there is a. Oh, okay. 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 Never mind. There's okay. an ask config.py. It's a yeah, long. I should have read that file. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a long JSON file, basically. And I can briefly show you, for example, for Corey, maybe. So we define uh, the systems, we define the, the QSs, the, the, the queues that we that the system can, can run on. Uh, we define the programming environments for each queue. Yeah. So, for example, this is Corey. Uh, we define the stage directory, the output directory, uh, the modules to load by default for every um, test that should be run on Cori. And then here are the partitions. So you see the login. Uh, so with the different uh, programming environments available on a login. And the same for as well. Um, yeah, and there are lots of options, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as well, UPC. And they have a sorry, Alberto. They have a, a specific call out. Do you see this data work stuff? They have a, a a way in reframe that you can add um, customized Slurm parameters, right? Because uh, uh, reframe doesn't know about data work, doesn't know about the burst buffer, and so you have to tell it how to add those parameters to Slurm. And so they have a, a mechanism for that. And you can see down below the same thing for shifter. Like we we've, we've added those in. Exactly. <clears throat> So let me skip maybe to per mother. So per mother only has these four, so it doesn't know about Intel. So it will not try to combine per mother with Intel. Um, uh, if it, if it, uh, there is a test with different systems and different programming environments available only on specific systems. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, thank you. Yeah, because I was thinking like we had AOCC removed once, right? Yeah. And that I would actually. For, for that, for us to know that it was removed, it would technically need to go up in the module loads rather than uh, in the available, I guess, uh, for a test to work. Like, yeah. Okay, fair. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, so um, I wanted to show you this test because it's a bit uh, complex. Uh, so we have a, a, a huge dictionary with a, a single string as a um, key. And then a um, tuple of commands that we want to run on, uh, uh, on inside the test. So, for example, there is a test that uh, sends a, or puts a file inside HPSS, gets the file back, and then checks if the file has changed, uh, removes the, the local file again, and, and, and uh, fetches the file again. And, and all these, these long list of commands are run by this script here. So we we feed the script the, the test with the, the keys to the uh, this long dictionary uh, and inside the test then we use uh, let me show you for example here yeah here so we we use the key to feed uh, the the command uh, inside the, the script so we we fetch the, the commands from the outside of the class. Uh, and, and this is a way I, I found to uh, to run this test. So uh, these are all, no, these are, yeah. So these tests are run on Cori, Gertie, Data Trunk, so, so DTN. 
um, for certain tests, we can we can tell it not to run them on on certain nodes. So these scripts are not available on, on DTNs, uh, on the data transfer nodes. So we only add them where when they're we are not running those those. Uh, so we all, we add the core data transfer nodes and uh, other systems when we are not dealing with these tests. Um, and yeah, so if, and we add all the N9 systems only when we are uh, not dealing with the red, uh, regent because there is a DNS issue, for example. And as you can see, we have different programming environments uh, which are not uh, all available on all systems. So Intel is not available on the N9 systems. So it's not, uh, it reframe won't try to combine the two. Um, yeah. Questions so far? Otherwise, maybe I can show you uh, this other class. So it's a it's a test that um, compiles H5Pi, but it's a bit more complex because there are two different. Um, so we don't want to add the checkout tag for the test running on KNL nodes because they take thirty minutes to compile. Um, so we only uh, we only add the, the checkout tag to the other set of uh, tests, let's say, um, and we use the uh, and we use an um, class inheritance to to split the two classes. Let's see. Okay, so here is a uh, the base uh, test which uh, inherits from the run only uh, test. So this test doesn't, um, should not compile, I think. Uh, yeah, so this test doesn't doesn't do a normal compilation because uh, there is no make or, or C make file, but it will install things with pip. So we have a, a specific uh, list of uh, commands <coughs> that we want to run uh, to install these uh, packages. And then, so, and as you can see, it, there is no uh, decorator before the class. So this class won't be executed by reframe. It will be ignored because reframe only uh, executes um, or yeah, only runs on classes that are defined with the, uh, with the decorator. And so we can inherit from this class, we can add the decorator on a subclass that inherits from the previous one. Um, and so for we we, uh, we add the valid systems only on a subset. Uh, only yeah. So the, the, the previous class will be fine for the KNL and, and nodes, but when we add uh, in, a, in a separate class all the other nodes, so as well per mother, Muller and, and Alvarez, we also add the checkout. So this is a way to uh, to differentiate be, between the, the two. Uh, the two systems, uh, let's say, or KNL, the KNL partition and all the rest, the systems under a nurse. Uh, let me see if there's a question. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm showing some of the more complex uh, tests here um, inside the, the reframe uh, repo just to uh, show you what's what's possible uh, in the reframe, but uh, you can start from a very simple uh, uh, script or a very simple test as uh, the one that showed in the slides before. And then you, you can move on from, from, from that. Uh, finally, I wanted to show you the IOR tests because these include uh, the, some benchmarking. Uh, and we also show you, uh, yeah, the run after setup because it will, uh, it's a something uh, not so common, maybe. Okay, so the IOR tests. Uh, once more, these are um, in this case we we're going to run a fixture of, of tests. So we run on different file systems, either on Scratch or CFS. We run on uh, POSIX mode or MPIO mode on these two file systems, uh, and we have two different configurations. So one with thirty-two node, uh, thirty-two um, cores. 
and uh, 16 uh, tasks per node. So uh, this should be a two node. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, should, yeah, <laughs> there is a probably a type yes. here, but mm -hmm. it's two nodes. Be yeah, nice. this should be a two node <laughs> config. Yeah. Well, anyway, um, and then different uh, segment size. Of, so these are different uh, IUR configuration and different uh, luster striping. Uh, what I wanted to show you here is uh, so right now we. We, we don't write the, uh, the programming environment here uh, alongside the valid, valid systems because there is a, it was a, um, wait, where is it? Oh no, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> never mind. We, uh, we only run on, uh, on the Cray programming environment because it was shared among the, uh, the different systems that we did, didn't want to um, to round the test twice uh, because they, these are quite um, time consuming, let's say. Um, so since Cray is available on, on all on both uh, systems, we run only, only in that on the different partitions. Um, so what I wanted to, sh to show you is the this set, set task. So when we run on Gertie on or or Mueller, we actually um, reduce the number of tasks. Uh, so it's this is a, a trick that we use to uh, have the same input, let's say, but actually run a smaller uh, test on on the, on the on the development systems, uh, just because we don't have enough uh, nodes to. Feel the, the or, or to satisfy the 1000 core request here. Um, yeah, and and so we we also use that to uh, to add all the options inside the IOR depending on the on the on the two systems here. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to show you last is the the performance patterns here. So IOR is also able to extract uh, the details, let's say, from, um, from, from, uh, from the output. And so in this case, it's uh, extracting the, uh, the write speed and the, write and the read speed from the output. And uh, there is a regex here to uh, extract the, the numbers. Um, and then we use this uh, as a reference. So, when we when you have performance patterns, you can also set certain boundaries. Uh, so you want to to have these numbers, so the right bandwidth, for example, to be included uh, included between uh, one. So one should be the, the average, let's say, uh, and then minus one. So from zero to uh, what is this uh, one hundred thousand uh, megabyte per second. Uh, so basically. We don't enforce any uh, any any any. Uh, we, we don't expect any any performance from this uh, test. We accept everything, uh, and we store. So uh, and we we patch refrain to send uh, uh, these these performance numbers to um, Elasticsearch. And what I wanted to show you last is the uh, yeah, is the fact that we. You, you can inspect these uh, these numbers from uh, Elasticsearch. For example, the, uh, uh, there is an IOR test running on 32 nodes, MPIO uh, on a single shared share file against C scratch, and we can take a look at that. And so, for example, this is the uh, the Kibana plot for uh, IOR running daily. So from uh, in the last on the last 30 days uh, and we can see the numbers on the read performance and the write performance uh, of IOR running MPIO on 32 nodes on C scratch. Um, yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, I wanted to end with a uh, uh, these two links. So one is the Git repo for the test that we already um, 
uh, explained before. And the other one is um, uh, one, a page of the documentation of a reframe where you can find different uh, reframe terms, let's say, and they're equivalent in um, on the different uh, or sorry, the different batch systems. So in our case, it's all in Slurm, but uh, reframe is able to uh, work with different uh, batch systems uh, on its own. So, uh, and you can here you can find the the translation from uh, reframe to uh, to the batch system terms. Um, that's it. Yeah, yeah, so I just I just wanted to say that Alberto is a, a reframe test virtuoso. So he's uh, figured out how to do some really complicated um, HPSS queries and reframe. Uh, and the vast majority of the tests are, are somewhat simpler, um, but we do have a huge library of tests that you can look at. Or if you're trying to figure out how to do a particular thing, you can always ask. Um, and, yeah, just don't be scared of <laughs> of refrain. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I think I think that was it. Did you have anything else, Alberto? No. If you if anybody has questions, feel free.